So can you tell us why does the open air field testing on Maui concern you? The lessons of my ancestors, of the people that I come from, um, and I am five generations, possibly more here on this island be that I don't even know of. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not pono. Uh, pono meaning that's not proper. That's not the way you show appreciation and love for the place that gives you life. Yeah. And for us, Aina is very important. It's not just land and something that you own and something that you live on, but it is elder sibling. It is the thing that if you care for it, uh, there is no way that it cannot care for you. Right, and Aina means that which feeds us. You're talking about the soil, the earth, the island, your the resources, home. all of the things. And the resources. Um, yeah. The air is breath, you know. Um, it infuses everything, I mean, not just our skin and plant cells, but uh, the very meakanu, the very plants, the very life that we need to sustain ourselves. If there are other chemicals, if there are other kinds of things that are affecting that breath, just for us, as if we take up smoking or, or if we're living in an area that is uh, densely populated, you know, where there's fog, where there's smog, um, our breath is, is shortened, our breath is cut short. We cannot, we cannot thrive. And uh, open air field testing here on Maui, on Kauai, throughout the islands, um, our islands are not thriving. They cannot breathe. And if they can't breathe, how are we to be able to breathe? Right. They're contaminating the air. And the recent studies show Center for Food Safety's uh, head Ashley here in Kauai recently spoke and said that they have over a thousand field tests, GMO field tests that are happening here on the islands. And in comparison, only a hundred are happening in California, which is the largest agriculture state in the United States. So that puts, puts some perspective for Americans and people around the world that what's happening here in Hawaii is an inundation of chemicals. And it's really sort of the incubator of GMOs, would you say? Definitely. Where, yeah. And you know, if it can happen here, it can happen anywhere else. They say that they have so many open air permits here because Hawaii has such perfect growing weather year round. Mm -hmm. However, I feel that as more and more chemical combinations get tested, that they can start going into other areas of the country. I mean, no problem. And have look at what they could do to specifically target a pest, you know, a, a mold. And so it may seem that people aren't touched on the continent because it's not in their backyard. But uh, any crop, any number of plants, any number of chemical testings could possibly go through. Uh, TPP could help that happen. Yeah. And so it's, it's, an, it's important for everyone, not just those that are very careful and very thoughtful of uh, the foods they put into their body, but uh, those of us that rely on those people that also do the work. Yeah. What I'm hearing is that it's important for the rest of the world to understand that the people of Maui and Hawaii have said enough stop, we don't want these field testings here, but you have not been heard and it has not been heated and they continue with the field testing. They continue with spraying 17 times more chemicals here than anywhere else. And they continue with over a thousand field studies. If the government allows that here, they will most likely allow the same type of behavior in other parts of the country and in other parts of the world. Indeed, yeah. and we can see that happening already where farmers are being sued just because of drift from GMO fields going onto their properties. And these are farmers that really are feeding the country, that really are feeding our organic, children. Organic farmers. Organic farmers. Right. And, you know, one of the problems that I see, uh, not just in how legislation is such that these companies can just blaze right through it and get what they want done, What's going on with legislation is it doesn't address the whole. You know, we're not looking at it holistically. And if we don't start looking at it holistically, um, we're going to find ourselves in a cul-de-sac that we cannot get out of. By holistically, you mean the earth, the soil, the air, the health of the people? Indeed, that each other. Each how other. we support each other, how we support our farmers, how we support those who make a commitment to grow organically and not use tons of pesticides and not constantly blanket our aina with things that, though people may say are, uh, oh, it's, it's going to be uh, inert in a day or two. 
really, when you look at the soil composition in those areas, it may have become inert on the plant, but in the soil itself, it is still very active. Right, and by inert, you mean an adjuvant, which is a, an other chemical, which is not active. Correct. Right. It's uh, an that's additional been some chemical. of the things that have yeah. been said about Roundup is that once you spray it, you know, it becomes inactive after a certain amount of time, and mm -hmm. that's simply not true. Yeah. Recent studies have shown that glyphosate, which is the active, chemi active chemical ingredient in Roundup, actually lasts in salty, dark water for 315 days. And it goes into groundwater, and they've found yeah. that uh, very close to villages in India and where they've sprayed heavily. And, uh, and as far as 25 miles away, and these people have no clue. You know, they don't accept that practice there. They've not asked for it there, just like here in Hawaii, and that could be anywhere. You may not want the practice there, you may not accept the practice there, but you have no choice. That's what we're really talking about here, is the people not having their words, their will, their rights acknowledged and heard and heeded that there are other forces, outside forces, chemical companies or the government, which are controlling what's happening to your land of your ancestors. Indeed. And, indeed. and not acknowledging your will. And that's, I think, one of the biggest frustrations here in Hawaii is that uh, we're not being heard. Regardless of whether you have just moved here, whether you've lived here years, whether you are from this aina, uh, no one is being heard. Money's being heard, but the people aren't being heard. And what I'm finding more and more is a, a groundswell of perhaps it's frustration, perhaps it's a discovered aloha, a love for the aina, uh, but more and more people are wanting to get involved, more and more people are upset, and hopefully as more and more people get informed, there will be a mindful change. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Your, your passion for the people and for your land really came through. Thank you. So, yeah, <laughs> thank you.